Two, four. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Chaos West stage. This is here. <laughs> it's a stage for self-organized sessions. And uh, am amazing, beautiful, smart, great people hold talks here, um, such as these two. And uh, it is my, my honor and pleasure to uh, leave the stage to Astro and Muffintosh. Thank you. Hi, I'm Astro. Uh, this talk will include a demonstration, but also some rambling about political developments. But first, let us break the ice for JavaScript. The web is a really good platform to me because all the specifications and documentations are freely available. You just pass URLs to people. They don't have to run your binary code without a sandbox. And nowadays, it's almost everywhere where you have a screen. The web is everywhere. And I bet for any of you, hardly a day goes by where you do not use the web. And then there's JavaScript, a language that is belittled by many of you, but it has somewhat improved with ECMAScript 6. And although it's dynamically typed, there are type checkers like Flow, there are supersets of the languages like TypeScript and Dart. My only sorrow point is uh, build tool chains that bundle the JavaScript for you into some compressed single JavaScript file that you can deploy on your web server. They are hard to figure out, they are hard to keep up with, but there are Node.js and Electron. We don't need a tool chain because you don't deliver code to clients, you run it locally, and well, then you lose the, the advantages of the web, but you can still use the same code base as you use on the web, the same algorithms. And JavaScript usage got very different with the advent of uh, Node.js and Electron. You've got modularization. Modularization means every tiny bit of functionality is a reusable package, a so-called module, on the NPM, the Node Package Manager. While you may know the extreme cases like the infamous left pad incident, the effects of modularization uh, consolidation of functionality with clear boundaries, clean interfaces, and no bloat. It may look bloated to you when it pulls in all those dependencies, but it's actually an advantage. And the graphic you can see here is modulecounts.com, which compares module systems of several languages, and the NPM ecosystem is by far the largest. Now, if you take a look at this JavaScript world, I discovered stuff that I find very much underrepresented, and that is peer-to-peer -peer functionality. Here are some of the, uh, some of, uh, the most active projects, some examples, uh, like Secure Scuttlebutt, which is a social networking service, which is entirely decentralized, and they've got an interesting approach they have a per-user blockchain where your proof of authority is a public key and public key cryptography also means you get private messaging for free. I just read on so Secure Scuttlebutt that there will be a safe organization tomorrow. Um, and now I'll give over to Muffintosh, the author of Peerflix, a DAT project member and author to 623 modules on NPM. Hey, yeah, I'm, thank you, I'm Avintosh. It's actually 324 now because I just published one an hour ago. Uh, so that's pretty cool. No, I think a really interesting point about modularization in, uh, on NPM, especially with the peer-to-peer -peer community, and notice that we have a bunch of different peer-to-peer -peer projects in Node. Uh, the that project which I'm working on, there's Scuttlebot, uh, a lot of IPFS is on uh, NPM also, is that since we come from a culture of very high modularization, there's a huge uh, net of shared dependencies that are all small packages. So in the list here that Astro has picked up, I have a thing like the, the multicast DNS module that is so heavily used by so many projects that it gets around $100,000 per day. And um, so you have all these competing projects 
um, which basically peer to peer projects are at, at its essence competing with each other because peer projects tend to compete in the same space, but they're all reusing probably 60, 70 percent of their module graph uh, by using small, single use, reproducible modules. So that's super exciting. Uh, the one I'm working on the most is the DAT project, which is on there. Um, Some Linux tool here, cool. <laughs> um, which is a peer-to-peer <clears throat> uh, -peer network for sharing a, a large series of data. It's basically a, an iteration on BitTorrent that aims to do uh, much more real-time sharing. So unlike IPFS, it's more based on, on real-time sharing. So you have a, 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 a f set of files you want to share, and you want to share them over time, and you want to share updates to them in a very efficient and nearly instant manner, uh, but still having a peer-to-peer -peer system. And I used to work a lot with uh, BitTorrent. Like Astro said, I used to uh, I have a project called PeerFlix, which is a streaming BitTorrent client. And uh, since both of these projects are heavily modularized, we were able to reuse a lot of dependencies, like uh, the dead project is uh, reusing the same DHT as, um, as BitTorrent is. And using a modularization strategy where you split things down into small JavaScript modules, it's very easy to like just pick the ones you want. Um, but I'll give it back to Astro now so you can talk about other cool projects. Yeah, last on the list was uh, WebTorrent. WebTorrent is a very nice BitTorrent implementation because it's very modular. Now, BitTorrent is the most popular peer-to-peer -peer protocol on the internet, but what WebTorrent also brings is capabilities to run in the browser, and you may ask yourself, peer-to-peer -peer in the browser? Yes, that is available today with the WebRTC stack, which brings voice over IP to the browser, and for voice over IP, you need low latency, so there is peer-to-peer -peer functionality. WebTorrent can use that for uh, data distribution. Why is this great? BitTorrent is in a bad situation. Uh, let me show you the WebTorrent logo. BitTorrent is in a bad situation, especially here in Germany, where I'm from. You are liable for all the actions of uh, the internet users of your internet connections, of your internet connection. If you ever get caught with copyright infringement, you have to pay a thousand euro fine by some evil lawyers. The effect is that there's not only no open Wi-Fi in Germany, there's also it has also effectively killed peer-to-peer -peer file sharing here. No one torrents anymore, except over virtual private networks to, to third-party countries. Now, this is motivation for me to run a torrent site um, to show that this is no illegal technology. Peer-to-peer -peer is actually much better. You get data integrity for free because you need to verify what you get from random peers. You get offline capability for free because what you download is on your computer. And most importantly, in contrast to, to classic client service systems, the more downloaders there are, the faster it gets for everyone. So this is actual democratization of means of media distribution or, or broadcasting. And actually, the term broadcasting has been coined in the combination of BitTorrent and podcast feeds. And these uh, podcast feeds are also my s source of legal content. Um, but in those five and a half years, not a single podcatcher has gained uh, BitTorrent support. And the legal lack of file sharing habits is a problem for me because no one has a BitTorrent client installed anymore. Now, if I have Wi-Fi, I can demonstrate it to you. Can you hold it? Yeah. Just swap your screen. Just waiting for some Linux magic to happen here. There we go. Now this is the website. You can um, download the torrent file like you could in the past five years, but as of this year I added WebTorrent. It was really easy and you can now click play and WebTorrent does everything to just add a media element and enable streaming playback. Of course it takes a while to buffer. I'm having like 12 megabytes over Wi-Fi here. That's not possible. The trick is that I have another browser on this computer 
running on localhost, seeding the file. No manual setup, just peer-to-peer. -peer. And it actually should start to play really soon, yes. And because it's so hard to programmatically uh, feed media data to a, to a multimedia element, the WebTorrent people have taken precautions that streaming is also possible. And it's really great. Now, back to the slides. Mm -hmm. Open office. Yes. Where did they go? Please hold for some Linux magic again. There we go. Thanks. Now, Lars in Germany has gotten somewhat lifted this year, uh, but uncertainty persists. You shouldn't run an open Wi-Fi here without a VPN, and no one would anyway because there's just no culture of running open Wi-Fi. And what's worse, there are other problems at the door. Net neutrality is melting away. For example, there's uh, this telecom stream on offer. It's currently a free add-on that, uh, that you can book to your mobile data service by Deutsche Telekom. And it means that these services get zero rated. They don't count into your, into your traffic volume. And this is now free, but of course there are monetization plans behind this. Cheaply rated tariffs for the masses who just want YouTube and SoundCloud and costly flat rates for us, power users. If you look into other countries like Portugal, this has gotten much further. No one of these users would willingly download on, on my service anymore. I tried to apply to the German Telekom with my BitTorrent service, but the Telekom can't recognize my traffic because technology is way better than classic client-to-server. And now I am at a disadvantage and I will take action against that. But my warning is if such schemes get widespread, the internet will die for us power users. We like to secure copy with our servers just like we use YouTube download. And why is this happening in the first place? Because there's too much centralism on the internet. That's why I'm telling you, don't let the internet become television 2.0, where you have many receivers, many recipients, but very few senders. Widespread peer-to-peer -peer deployment means no one will put projects and companies at its disadvantage without a large public outcry. Make every user a power user. Just don't develop exactly for or against bad laws because then you could be accused of, of willfulness. Just implement what the internet allows for. And then you have an existing project which can be, which can be positioned as being at disadvantage. And that is, that is one way of uh, hindering these lawmaking efforts that break the internet. So please put more peer-to-peer -peer into your apps, put more peer-to-peer -peer into your websites. Thank you. Do we have time for questions? If there are any. Can I answer? Merci. Yes, we do. Dear audience, time for questions. Oh, we start at the beginning, right at the front. Um, it's not so much a question, it's more a comment. You, the example you have in Portugal, um, I have to comment on it because I'm from Portugal. I started a digital rights uh, organization there and we're going to tackle that pretty soon. Right now we have other actions that take all of our time, but net neutrality is going to be one of our big fights. Um, okay, but now back to other topics. Uh, you mentioned peer-to-peer -peer and JavaScript. Uh, curiously, you did not mention ZeroNet. Do you know the project? What do you think about it? Did you say ZeroNet? Yes. The 
Yeah, I know Serenet. It's a, it's a cool project. Um, I think, I mean, so when we talk about peer-to-peer -peer and JavaScript, we talk about multiple things at once. We talk about the browser, we talk about Node.js, we talk about Electron. Something like Serenet as a mass adoption thing, I mean, it's not going to hit the browser anytime soon. Uh, so, you know, we need, we need multiple strategies, right? Well, why do you think it will not meet or will not hit the browser anytime soon because it has to be installed first and yeah so just like okay. anything that has that install dialog is just going to have a, a, a massive drop off in user adoption compared to a normal website uh, for, for yeah. i'm not saying it's like it doesn't say anything bad about the mm -hmm. project it's just that in order to deploy something fast we need stuff that works in the browser now okay yeah well it works in the browser if you access it through a, through a proxy but you cannot control it so that's just it you yeah. can still access it decentralizedly, but it's not your node. Yeah. Right. So uh, the, the project is cool and it's solving a lot of really hard peer-to-peer -peer things like uh, connectivity. Uh, and I'm sure, in, uh, you know, as you know, years run by, it'll get more and more adopted because it's a really cool project and it'll help a lot. But you know, we, we kind of need both things still. Questions. Thank you. Dear audience, more questions? Hi. Um, do you still need stun servers? If because you were talking about WebRTC. In my in my experience, it tries hard at doing like nut hole punching, but if it can't get it to work, it's gonna use Google service. Google service and this. Uh, yeah, who hosts the stun and turn service? Okay. Yeah, so for WebRTC, uh, it's built in. So the, the protocol itself is kind of complex and, and, and you know, kind of a massive thing. I, I personally wish it was much more low level and we just had a UDP type stack in the browser so we could implement our own. You can actually do stun between peers uh, in a peer to peer fashion also if you have one introductory peer. It's just way more complicated, which is why nobody does it. Um, but you could, could, in theory, for WebTorrent, they could implement um, an extension for the, for the stream that would allow a known peer between two other peers to, to, to act as a stun server. Because it's just a matter of having, you have to route a couple of messages uh, if they can, in fact, connect peer to peer. But there are, are cases where um, firewalls will just shut everything down and you need a ICE server, I think it's called, right? Yeah, ICE server for doing tunneling that, in that sense. And in that case, you need a centralized endpoint. Thank you. Some more questions from the audience? Well, then, uh, thank you very much again. One last question, as usual. If uh, any questions arise, where do we find you in order to talk about the whole thing a little bit more? Well, I'm on Mastodon and Secure Scuttlebutt. Yeah, so I'm on RC. I'm in on Freenode. I'm in the Dead channel, and I'm also roaming around. So just ping me there. We also have a there's a Dead session happening at uh, eight tonight. It's in the in the the wiki. So come find me there. Cool guys, thank you very much. An applause.